Have a look at old mate Homo erectus. You notice anything? Have a look at his jaw, his chiseled features. Take a look at his teeth, eh? They actually fit inside his mouth. G'day, mates. Get a load of this. Obstructive sleep apnea expected to affect nearly 77 million US adults by 2050. New ResMed study finds, and this was published in The Lancet only a few days back. This represents a relative increase of nearly 35% from 2020, impacting 46% of adults aged 30 to 69. What's going on? Why are we so shit at breathing? I know that's harsh guys, but I think we need to just start asking some bigger questions here. Like what's happened? What went wrong? Now, obviously weight, we all know that there's a great big correlation between weight and OSA. And we know over the past couple of decades, we've been getting a lot heavier, although that could be about to change with the GLP-1 weight loss revolutions and all the new drugs that are coming out. But there has to be more to it than just weight. Right now over in Singapore, there is the World Sleep Convention. And a lot of the talks are on airway dentistry. And I think they're onto something. I have a feeling this is some sort of an evolutionary thing that's happening with our upper airway, with our breathing, with our craniofacial structures. Have a look at old mate Homo erectus. You notice anything? Have a look at his jaw, his chiseled features. Take a look at his teeth, eh? They actually fit inside his mouth. What's going on with that? Just paid $7,000 at the dentist the other day for my daughter, yeah? To try and straighten up all her teeth. Probably needs her wisdom teeth taken out at some point as well. What's going on? Why don't our teeth fit inside our mouths? Hmm? Could this perhaps have something to do with this Bloody epidemic of shit breathing. I think so. I think so. I think this is what's going on here. We need to get our babies doing what Homo erectus was doing. Gnawing on goddamn dinosaur bones. You use it or you lose it. And we're not using it. We're just giving them mush, yeah? Feeding them all that mush. Give the kids a great big steak. So our kids are developing these weak, shitty little jaws. And it's all crowded. The teeth can't fit right, so they're jammed in there. The tongue can't sit right, so you've got crap tongue posture. And so we have this epidemic of mouth breathing. And once our kids start mouth breathing, I fucking hate that word, it's all downhill from there. It's all downhill, all right? Because you don't have the tongue sitting where it needs to be, pushing up against the roof of the mouth, and that leads to the expansion. You don't get that anymore. So we have these crappy mouth breathing kids, and they all end up looking the same with this sort of like recessed chin with the crappy bent nose, and they're all ugly. And they've all got crappy teeth. And it all stems from this crappy jaw. So what can you do about it? Well, there's a lot of buzz right now around maxillary expansion. And when kids are between that age of six to 11, when everything's still developing, your airway dentist can put a device in, right, that expands the maxilla. I'll show you it in a moment. But this is an example right here. And what it's showing is, it's like a, an airway scan. And it shows before and after maxillary expansion. So we've got a total volume here of 8.9 originally and now total volume of 26.3. And I don't know what the MCA is, but it used to be 0 0.2 millimeters squared, and now it's 310 millimeters squared. Basically, it's opened up the airway a lot more. And we'll go forward and have a look at some of these slides here. So how does it work? What is the mechanism of action? Number one, 
nasal breathing improvement. It's all about nasal breathing, guys. Nasal floor widening as we're expanding the maxilla up under here, it's widening everything out, making it easy to breathe through your nose. Increased nasal volume and upper airway, decreased nasal flow velocity and resistance. We talk about airflow resistance all the time on this channel. Improved pharyngeal collapsibility, less mouth breathing. That's what it's all about, guys. Easy to breathe through your nose, less resistance, less mouth breathing. And in the early years of development, that leads to a much better jaw, far less crowding, open airway. Mechanism number two, tongue repositioning. Improving tongue posture. Decrease tongue to palate distance, decrease hyoid to mandible distance, decrease interoral airway volume. And they've got some pictures here before the expansion. You see this great big gap here. And then post expansion, a little gap, better tongue posture. And this is a great picture right here, check it out. So this is sort of the roof of the mouth. See the high arch here? And see how far away the tongue is from the arch? This is before, and look at after. See how the arch now is nice and wide? and The tongue has room to sit up against it and have a look what it does to the airway right here. So this is before, you see the flat tongue here, not resting up against the roof of the mouth. And then after, tongue moves up, it's got room to sit flush. And then the airway, look at the airway here. Big improvement. Unfortunately, I don't have mechanism number three slides, but mechanism number four is reduced inflammation of your tonsils, your adenoid glands, you know, which can really crowd your upper airway. And they show it here in the picture. All right, so see the pink here? This is before the, the glands. This is the tonsil glands here. And this is after. And this is because of all the mouth breathing once again. And there was an average 40.2% reduction in the inflammation, in the size of the tonsils after the expansion. And the greatest reduction was 75.4%. Now this is really interesting because two of my kids have had their tonsils and adenoid glands removed because of sleep apnea, because of the mouth breathing. They couldn't breathe, everything was blocked. But looking back, this is what I would do, and I have a feeling it would save me a lot of money in braces, $24,000 to be exact. Expansion benefits beyond arch width. Enhanced nasal breathing, tick. Tongue repositioning, tick. Reduced adenotonsillar hypertrophy, tick. Decreased pharyngeal, Collapsibility, tick. Open airway, better breathing, tick, 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 tick. Hey, look at all these people here taking photos going, whew, mind blown. Forget this shit, just get the kids when they're young. So here's what I want you to do. Step one, I want you to follow at TruthDDS on TikTok. He's an airway dentist, he's all over this shit and he makes great videos that are really informative. Number two, the next time you're walking past your kid's room and they're asleep, have a look how they're breathing. Are they lying there in bed, mouth closed, breathing through their nose? Or are they lying there like this, catching flies? Because if they're like that, they've got an issue. Some form of craniofacial skeletal deformity that can be fixed. And you're much better off fixing it now, during development, which improves the nasal breathing, which improves the tongue positioning, which stops airway collapse, all that stuff I mentioned before. Because not only will that improve their appearance, they're gonna grow up far more attractive. They're less likely to have ADHD, learning difficulties, they'll be smarter. And best of all, they probably won't need one of these. One of these. Thanks for watching, look after your mates, I'll see you soon.